Welcome back to another Skid Factory Quick Tech. Today we're going to dive down the rabbit hole of the different types of forced induction. We've lined up the main types of forced induction that most people would use on their engines in modern era. We've got the turbocharger, which everybody knows we're a big fan of. We've got the centrifugal supercharger and the positive displacement supercharger. So you'll see there's a big difference in form between this positive displacement charger and the turbo and the uh, centrifugal supercharger. I guess the thing is that these two are very closely related, whereas this isn't. Uh, so turbocharger, most people know how they work. We have done a, a quick tech on turbos. It, it is also a supercharger. It's a turbine powered centrifugal supercharger and that is uh, shortened down to turbo charger or turbo or choo choo boy if you're on the internet. Uh, so this, none of these things are new. So this thing here has been developed for a long time. They work great, big fan. Centrifugal supercharger looks very similar. It's got the same sort of compressor on it, but it's driven from the crankshaft rather than being driven by exhaust gases. These aren't new either. I remember going to a war museum in Germany a long time ago and there was a 1940s German warplane engine there that had one of these cast into the valley of the engine. So they've been used for that long. Um, obviously they started using things like this on, on planes because as they go up in the air, the oxygen levels deplete so they need to try and force more air into the engine to bring back its efficiency so it doesn't fall out of the sky. Um, nowadays, this one here is obviously used to uh, add boost pressure and efficiency and get more power. This one here is a distant relative of the old Roots blower, which was designed in the 1800s by the Roots brothers. Uh, originally nothing to do with engines, it was actually designed as as it, as it says, a blower. It was used to blow air onto blast furnaces to um, increase the efficiency of the furnace to get it up to a higher temperature to do whatever they needed to do with it. Um, so the, the Roots blower is a pretty simple device. Um, I'm sure it was a pretty big deal back then when they produced it. Um, but uh, on an engine, don't, don't know so much. Uh, the main use of the Roots blower after that was on a on two-stroke diesel uh, GM Detroit engines. So um, that, again, wasn't really used as what people think they were used for. The two-stroke diesel design, it was a wet sump. It wasn't like a motorbike engine. It had, it had exhaust valves, so it was, a, it was a pretty wild design. It had no way of drawing the air into the engine so they had to have a blower to blow the air into the engine and also scavenge out the exhaust if there was any residual. It wasn't really designed to create boost pressure. It was just designed to push air through the engine. Later on, hot rodders grabbed them, started putting them on top of engines. That's great. They did pick up a bit of power, um, but not enough for my liking. So this here is a, uh, an Eaton TVS blower. Uh, it is still a roots type blower, uh, but it's obviously the, the designs of, they've actually had to look into the design and greatly increase the efficiency of it because a traditional roots blower is rubbish. Like it, it will make a bit more power on an engine, yeah, but compared to what we're used to seeing with turbochargers and even centrifugal superchargers, they really don't add much except for a lot of heat. I think most engines that have got an old roots blower on them would probably make more power if they just took the blower off. So they're incredibly inefficient at creating boost pressure. Uh, they're, they're not even that efficient at moving air really. Uh, it's just, it was never designed for that. Um, so trying to adapt it across without changing the design just didn't work very well. Most people that have an, a blower on their car, they, they just like it because it's huge and shiny and shit and makes noises and has a big belt on it with teeth. The only application where they probably do work okay is on a methanol engine that's already like 15 run compression running on methanol. Uh, the, the hot air that the blower's pushing in 
is negated by the methanol being injected. Um, it sort of works, but again, it would probably work. It, they, they, let's say it makes 800 horsepower on methanol, and it probably makes 880 with the blower on it, unless you push it over 7 psi, and then it probably makes 780. So this, this, it's a thing. Just because it's shiny and has a big tooth on it doesn't mean it works good. Uh, so back to the Eaton. This is a, a Harrop Eaton. Harrop is a Eaton dealer. This is a twisted vane supercharger. So the original design of the Roots blower was three lobes and they just grabbed air, pushed it downwards. That was it. This here is a twisted vane so that instead of just having three straight rotors, they actually twist the rotor 140, 150, 160 degrees. There's a few different models and that changes the dynamic of it. Um, it makes it far more efficient and it also changes the way the air is drawn into the blower, um, which has opened up a lot of design um, for the use of them on a like modern engine. Uh, you can see this, there's the pulley, there's the intake. In the old school stuff, the intake would be up here because that's where the air was drawn in. The twisted vane actually draws from the end of the vane and moves it around and then pushes it out the bottom. So they're able to make these different snouts to suit different applications and it really opens up what they've been up to done with packaging and fitting them to a car without it poking out the bonnet because you can't have that in every country and it doesn't really work that well. You see those Woody? Air's drawn in here by these rotors. It travels along the rotor through the, the 150 degree twist and is expelled here. These rotors don't actually touch each other. There is an air gap and with that air gap is an efficiency loss. But this design compared to the old Roots, original Roots blower is a thousand percent better and it does work quite well in certain applications. Application wise, the application for these is in the middle of a V engine and that's where they normally end up. Um, turbocharging a V engine is rarely neat. It, you end up with things going everywhere. Lots of pipes, lots of heat, blah, blah, blah. These things you can sit in the middle of the valley. Um, it fits perfectly. It's a great spot for it. Uh, Harrop blower installations are intercooled. Underneath it is actually an intercooler, a water to air unit. Again, it heats up the air, the intercooler cools it down, just the same as a centrifugal compressor does. Uh, that makes a huge difference to the output uh, and the efficiency of the unit. Going back to this thing, I've no idea what this, what brand this thing is or what it's off. I think it's off a Falcon, wasn't it? Like yeah. A like six cylinder Falcon engine? EA, no, EA. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like the worst one in the world. It's actually got a billet compressor. Maybe Justin will comment and let us know what it's from. I guess the difference between this and that is this is free floating. This shaft does what it wants. Gets driven by the exhaust and we regulate the speed of it by a wastegate. This is not free floating. It is directly driven off the crankshaft. That cannot change. It it will, it will only make full boost at full engine RPM, that, that it's not negotiable. That can make full boost at half engine RPM and then be regulated. This can't. And that's the big difference between a centrifugal supercharger and a turbocharger. Um, does that mean this is not as good? Not really. Um, these things are very good in, in certain applications. Once again, there's horses for courses. Uh, if you've got a big cube drag car and you cannot put the power down that that engine can make off the line, these things are perfect because this will, will slowly add power as you travel down the strip. Um, so you can take off with half boost maybe, I don't know, it depends on your converter setup, uh, and not like overpower your chassis or tyres. And then as you gain speed, this will just continue to add boost pressure and power as you go. 
So in that application, these things work really well. Uh, on the other hand, this on a circuit car, not so much. You want to be able to fine tune where the power comes in, that sort of thing. Uh, whereas the turbocharger can do that. Obviously not this one because that's off a Scania or something, so uh, not really appropriate. Um, these things, other way around, full boost straight away. It, it's just they just work instantly. That's why people love these things, even if they don't actually know why or have ever had one. So they also have the purpose of forcing air into the engine, which is all good. I'm all for that, but they have different applications and may work better on different engines as well. Are you enough, Woody? I've had enough. I think you've pretty much covered the topic. It's pretty hard to talk about boost and not get emotional. There might be some controversy in the comment section about supercharged big blocks, though. Hmm. Prove me wrong. <laughs> I've done it. Do not work very well. That's all we've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and get into that comment section and start yelling. Woody said I should point out that this is a, a, actually a display unit. They don't normally have windows in the side of them like this. It's obviously normally a sealed case. Um, thanks to Harrop for lending us this for the purposes of this uh, little uh, chat. And also sorry, sorry Harrop for breaking the display unit. It does have blue tack on it though, so I'm thinking that I'm not the first guy to break it. <laughs> <laughs>